All right, boys and girls, we're back here on the Vanagon Rebuild. So, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the videos. That helps a lot. It spreads the videos out so that other people can find them. So, took the uh, housing to a friend of mine's shop and we cleaned it out. This is the first gear brake band. It actually has a rubber seal on each side. Um, it's supposed to move back and forth and there's a check valve right here which lines up with a passageway right there. This does come out. You can take this out. If it was worn out, I guess you could re find one. Maybe they can replace it. Um, it doesn't come in the kit. Okay, but it does have a rubber seal on it. Second thing it did come in the kit is these little piston rings. See how they, they hook into each other here? Uh, there we go. See that? They hook and unhook. These, there's four of these on the pump assembly here. Sorry. Right here, two at the top, two kind of at the bottom at the base. All right. Mine didn't seem very bad, but I'm replacing them anyways because I'm going all the way through this. This is the pump. You can see right about here above my finger is a little check ball. That little check ball what I can tell lines up with this passage right here so when we go to put this pump in we got to make sure we line that check ball up with that another way we can tell is I can see the faint markings of the housing on it right there so we will put this in right now and Course. There we go, that's lined up pretty good. We'll get some bolts in that and tighten that up, and then we'll go to the next step. Alright, so we have the pump down in here. You have the first gear brake band in there. Now we need our first gear slash reverse drum. Now, see that hole down there? That is going to go over that little check valve right in that part right down there and this lug is going to go in the groove kind of near the top so that can line up All right. uh, come on there we go see that one on there this one on there now we can put the spring and bolt assembly in there and tighten it down. Okay, so we torqued all five of them to 61 inch pounds or 0.7 newton meters. And now we can go to the next step. Okay, we've tightened it all down, five foot pounds, put our second gear brake band in there. Now I think I'm gonna put the servo plunger in for the second gear. I'm going to have to put the seals on it for that and then we can start putting clutches together. Okay so the second gear servo we had to put new seals in it. The inner one the seal face the lip of the seal faces that way the outer one faces in towards the transmission and then it has two o-rings and a spring that goes here and we'll go in the side of the transmission and you'll need to be able to push it in to install the retaining clip. All right, so figured I'm going to start doing some of these clutches and stuff next. This, I believe, is the direct drive slash reverse clutch. And this thing is under pressure. It has motorcycle. This pack of springs that go in there. And on top of that is this shield and this clip. All right, that clip goes in a groove on the main shaft. And underneath all of that is this diaphragm, this piston right in there. And that's what I'm about to remove. But the thing to know about this is it's got pressure on it. So you need to get a pair of clamps or something to get down in there and hold it down. 
because you'll start getting that snap ring off and then you'll notice that you're in trouble it's about to explode on you so this diaphragm is got part of the gasket sticking out right here it's damaged luckily i bought some new ones for this anyways and it's stuck in there pretty good so what i'm finding is this little uh, ignition wrench is helping me get in the grooves there and pull this up because i tried sticking a screwdriver in there and it just wouldn't do it so let me pry that out and we'll show you going back together all right so i got it out you can see the damaged part of the lip there that was not me prying on it just that's what it was it blew out or whatever it stuck i don't know it's original it says germany on it still so it's 40 almost four years old has the part number there it's hard to see 0010323321b replacement one has a part number here 01032 yeah 323121 so it's the right thing it looks like the right piece and put a little grease on it and slide it in there one thing to note there is a check valve down here make sure it's free mine is moving if you shake it you can see it move you can hear it move all right, probably can't see it on camera, but it moves. Just make sure that's free or else that might be a problem. I'm going to put the seal in. We'll put some grease on it. This is a transmission assembly lube. Put that on there. Put it in there. Put my spring pack back on and put my clip on. All right. Got the piston in there. Got the springs on there. Now, these springs are not attached. They want to come out. So just be careful putting it in there. Here's the cover, and I will not film myself struggling with this, boys and girls. Use your imagination. All right, got it in its groove. I believe I got all the pieces back in it. That should be good to go. On to the next part. All right, I got it all back together. So, put the clutches back in. Did not film that because it's pretty simple. You're just stacking clutches. The thing you only got to do is you do got to check the clearance, and it's supposed to be between 2.05 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. I believe is what it was. Look in your manual and check. But you're supposed to have clearance in there for the uh, clutches to basically slip, I'm guessing. So this one's done. I will probably move on to this one because this has that other seal in it. And I'll have to figure out the name of that. But I think it's another final drive seal. It goes in like this. Shouldn't be too hard, just snap ring deal. And we'll get on that. All right, got the piston, the new one in the forward clutch. This is the old one, it was like that. Still pliable, poly usable, but since I'm here doing everything, I might as well do it. I don't see any next cuts or tears on it. And then it has this spring washer you have to put back in. And the clip. This clip was a little hard to get out because where this little groove right there is that helps you get it out was underneath one of the uh, metal pieces here. One of those keyways. So I had to knock it this way until I could get it. So anyways, we're going to put this back in and move forward. Alright, so I put, which one is that? The direct reverse clutch setup in there. I have the bearing in there. And now this is the forward clutch piston and all that the shell going to put that in there did not find out if there's a specific way but I just got to get all those little clutch packs apparently to line up come back to you 
Okay, I'm slightly skipping steps on y'all. So, I got the thrush washer under there, which was a, looks like one of these steel plates, but it's thicker and has a convex side on it that goes down in there like so. Then a clutch pack goes down in there, then one of the steels. And then you can put the outer section of this planetary in there and you'll see this curved side will go up all right and there's a washer and right here a little trunnion bearing that goes in there and then this goes with this face down towards that Maybe the planetary is lined up there go get that on there all right and now so this is that thrust washer it's a thicker piece it's got a convex side on it one of the inner spline plates it calls it but it's another little clutch packs and then you can slide the steel because the steel goes over the little this has little fingers on it so that clutch pack can't go anywhere. It's stuck on that one side of the planetary. And this will slide over that. So we put that on, then this on. And now we got to build our other clutches. So we need another clutch disc, steel, clutch disc, steel, clutch disc, big pressure washer, pressure plate, thick washer basically. And then the clip. So I'm going to get the stack in that, and then we'll come back. All right. Got that in there, got the snap ring in there. I'm sorry I'm not trying to do this as I go. It's I don't have my camera mount thing and it's too hard to try and hold and do it at the same time. But you need to check the gap between the plate and the snap ring. That's your backlash. It's supposed to have, I think it said 25 to 35 thousandths backlash. All right. So, that's done. We can move on to the next part. Alright, next step is the double sun gear. And then the drive shell, as they call it. So, we'll get to putting that in. And then, it's going to be some clutch packs on the outside. And then the planetary here. And then, going towards the front plate. We're getting close. Okay, it's on there. So the sun gear, it's hard to get the drive shell around it because it's at a hex, helical cut, but so are the um, slices in the drive gear here. So it makes it a little fun putting it down. Now we got to put the thrust washer on there, and then we can move on up to that stuff. All right, so I put the reverse planetary assembly on now because it has the bucket that the um, next set of clutches will slide in. The steels will slide into the outer case and the clutches packs will line up on this inner drum. There's a plastic three tab spacer that goes under here. Just put some grease on that and stick it up in there and then put this on and then the one-way clutch ends up going over top of all this. So I'm going to stack up the uh, clutch pack and move to the next step. Okay, I put the one-way clutch on. I learned a trick. When you go to put it down, the one-way clutch has these little rollers. Yeah, let's see right here. There's a little roller in here. And there's a groove cut into this housing so that when this roller goes this way, it comes out at an angle and it locks up. Well, it has a little spring in there, and that spring's trying to force that roller out this way. Well, when you go to put this in, that's going to hamper you. So you have to get in here and push these rollers. Right there, you can see the roller right there. You got to push that roller it back into that groove to get this one-way clutch down and on there. And then let's not forget about our little groove here for that little um, wedge and then our snap ring. Alright boys and girls, that's where we're going to stop with today. 
we still have to put our adjustment rod in and our second gear band brake piston in which is over there I got the back plate on here and there's a gasket under there and then the gasket here there will be an o-ring on the diff housing that seals all this up um, next time we will be putting in the adjustment rod and the band the piston and then we'll go to work on the valve body and the accumulator so if this has helped you please like and subscribe i'm sorry it's taken so long to do videos like this but the videos just can't really be edited any shorter so thanks a lot please subscribe that helps a lot and i'll see you guys later get out there and get your projects done all right so i installed my servo over here that was fun because it's got spring pressure the best thing i found to do was slide it in there use my rubber mallet and tap it and once you got it in there the o-rings kind of held it and you could clip, get the clip on it's lined up with the band my push rod is in here for the adjuster which is over here and that i believe it was a five mil hex head it goes inside there on mine so, to adjust this, what they say to do is to tighten the adjuster in to 87 inch pounds, which is roughly 7 foot pounds, it's a tad bit more, and then to loosen it. And what that does is it centers the band up, is what I believe they're trying to do there. Then you tighten it again to 43 inch pounds roughly almost four foot pounds all right if you don't have inch pounds a little less than four foot pounds all right so you tighten it down again and then you'll back it off two and a half turns so you'll go all the way around once all the way around second time and then halfway around then you lock the jam nut and that will give you some play in there on your band so it's not tight and it gives it about for this one about an eighth inch gap, I guess, somewhere in that range. All right, so that is that. I have my kick down linkage on here. I had the snag from a different transmission because mine did not have it. I have everything I think we need in the actual auto unit. The accumulator I'm gonna do when we put the uh, valve body together and put all that in there. Um, everything else, as far as the actual clutch packs and all that are concerned are in here. So the next video will be disassembling the valve body and cleaning it out. I have no clue. It's just like a massive worm of ant holes. I don't know exactly what they do, but I know there's check valves in there and I know the passages need to be cleaned out because it might have material go through it. Um, there are little check valves and springs and there's measurements they have for those. We're going to take those out and make sure they're clear. But as far as how that actually operates, I am really, you know, that's magic land to me. So anyways, boys and girls, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.